I'm just sort of going through my head what I'm actually going to say at the beginning. Okay, so if you've ever wondered how to create a rope brush in Adobe Illustrator, we're going to be doing that in today's tutorial and, spoiler, you don't do it manually with the pen tool. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a rope brush all in Adobe Illustrator. As I mentioned, we're not doing this manually with the pen tool. No, 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 no. We're going to be doing this by creating a pattern brush, and it means that we can then apply that rope effect to any path that we create in Illustrator. So we'll jump to the screen now and get started. Right here, so we're now in Adobe Illustrator and I have a new artboard, 1920 by 1080. And the first thing I'm going to do is grab the rectangle tool over here and just create a small rectangle. In fact, I'll zoom in because this is going to be quite small, something like this. And I'm just going to increase the stroke weight from the property inspector on the right. We'll go with something like this. If you don't see the stroke panel or you're on an older version of Illustrator, don't worry, just go up to window and down to stroke and you get all those properties there. So next we're just going to select none for the fill. So we just have a black stroke or outline. Next, we're gonna grab the direct selection tool and just click on these little circles inside the main anchor point. So I can select this here and you can see that becomes selected. And then I can go down here, hold shift, click on this one as well. So with just these two selected, I can now click and drag towards the center. And you'll see they turn red, indicating that I can't round off these corners anymore. Now, this only works on Illustrator CC and more recent. I think if you're on CS6, uh, I don't think they had these back then. So you may need to find another way to round off the corners. So once we've done that, we're going to select the shape, hover over the corner and just drag to rotate. We'll hold shift. It will snap very nicely at a 45 degree angle. And then what we can do is with this selected, we can drag to the right. And as we drag, hold down alter option on the keyboard. This will duplicate the selected object. And you can see it's moving up and down. So if we hold down shift at the same time, it will just snap that perfectly in place. So next we're gonna go up to view and just switch off snap to pixel. Now by default, Illustrator has them both turned on. It's very useful, but we're not snapping to the pixel in this one. We want to snap to the point only. So we'll just turn this one off and I'm gonna zoom in. Now I need to line the paths for these two shapes up on top of each other perfectly. But because they have a stroke applied, it makes it quite difficult to do that. So if we press Command or Control Y on the keyboard, you can see we go into outline mode. This is like a wireframe view, no styling or anything, just pure paths. And I can zoom in. I think you can zoom in up to 64,000% or something. So I think that, that seems uh, good enough. And I'm just gonna drag these so that they line up. So I'm still holding shift when I'm dragging so they stay perfectly in line. And if you can get it lining up perfectly at 64,000%, when I zoom out all the way back here, no one is going to be any the wiser. So there we go. Remember Command or Control Y to come out of outline mode. And it looks like that, which isn't correct. So let's just select these. We'll go to the stroke panel and just make sure our stroke is aligned to the center. There we go. Fantastic. So you get like an even amount of stroke either side of your path. Okie dokie. So let's select these. I'm going to increase that stroke weight a little more. We'll go for something like eight. Next, thing, I'm going to go up to window, down to attributes, and you get this little window pop up here. So if I select both of these, by default, I've got my option turned on. It's this one here. So you can turn off the marking of the central point of the selected object, but I need to be able to see the central point for both of these shapes. So I'm gonna keep this turned on and you can see that little dot pops up in the middle of each of them, just showing me where the center is. That's quite important. So I can see where the center is. Next, I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and just left click and drag all the way up until that first central point. You can see it snaps there with smart guides. And if you don't have smart guides turned on, please, please, please go up to window, 
uh, not window, view, up to view, down to smart guides, please turn those on, it will make your life so much easier. So now I'm just gonna swap the fill and the stroke here. So this becomes black. In fact, I'm just gonna give this another color from the swatch panel and just drop the opacity so you can see what's underneath it. So there we go. So next I'm gonna hold Alter Option, Shift and Drag to duplicate this shape over here. And I'm just going to snap the left edge to the other central point within this shape. So you should have something that looks like this. So let's just bump up that opacity again. So when you're happy to go ahead, just select the original shapes that you created, go up to Object, down to Expand, leave Fill and Stroke checked, and click OK. Next, go over to the Pathfinder panel. You can see I have mine over here on the right in the Contextual Properties panel. But if you don't have that, as I say, if you're on an older version of Illustrator, like CS6 or something, go up to Window, down to Pathfinder. It brings up this panel here and just click the top left option, Unite. And that just combines all of your pieces of path all together into one shape. So now what we can do is select our black shape and our red shape on the left. And again with the Pathfinder panel, we can use the second option along, which is called minus front or subtract. So what it will do is it will take the shape on top, in this case, the red rectangle and subtract that or knock it out of the shape below it. So you can see it literally clips that. And if I go back into outline mode, it has literally completely removed that part of the shape. So we're gonna do the same again here now. Select both the black and the red shape. The black is on top. Select minus front from the Pathfinder panel. And it leaves us with this segment. So hopefully you've got to this part, you've got a segment. Next, we're gonna go up to window, down to brushes. This brings up the brush panel. And what we can do is with this selected, click the menu icon at the top, go new brush. And this window pops up. We're gonna select pattern brush, click OK and we get another dialog box up that allows us to define our pattern. So I'm gonna call this Rope Brush. And what you can do is you can adjust these options in real time uh, when you apply this brush to a path and you can see how they change, but I'm just gonna leave all of this as is for now. Stretch to fit, that looks fine. Colorization, I'm gonna turn this to tint. What this allows me to do is apply a color or a swatch to the brush once I've made it. So we'll click OK, and there we go. It's added that brush to the brushes panel, and I'm just gonna zoom all the way back out now. We'll leave this little piece of brush over here. And if I just grab the brush tool, we'll just draw a really terrible squiggly line. And you can see it automatically uses that new brush I've created. If it doesn't, and it just draws a normal line, just select that path, and then just click on the brush here in the brushes panel. So now I can double click this, I can load this back up. And I've got a few options here as well. So I can define how this brush behaves at certain corners and you can see it changes the preview in real time. So I can choose exactly how everything's gonna join. Depending on your brush, it can get quite complicated. So this is definitely worth playing around with and you can adjust a lot of other options here as well. Click OK and it will ask if you want to leave any brush strokes that you've made already, leave them alone completely, or you can click apply to strokes and it will update any instances of this brush that have been used in your document. So essentially now we've created this brush and we've applied it to a path, we can apply it to any path in Illustrator. So we'll get rid of terrible squiggly line and you could draw a square, a polygon, a star, or you could just draw a circle. And that's a very plain circle with a generic black stroke. But if we select it, go to the brushes panel, click our brush, and there we go. We have our, our pattern brush applied to the path. And we can, of course, increase or decrease the stroke. Now this behaves slightly differently. Oh, that's quite cool. This behaves slightly differently to how it normally would in actually increasing or decreasing the stroke because we've got this custom brush, but by adjusting the stroke, you can see it drastically changes the appearance of our rope effect. And what we can do is if I did want to increase the stroke is, well, let's just make a copy of this. So remember, alter option, drag, we have a copy. 
go up to object, expand appearance. And what I can do now is if I start increasing the stroke, you can see it gradually becomes thicker. I can adjust it until I'm happy, then go to object, expand, leave those checked, click OK. Now in outline mode, you can see this is a total mess. Um, it's good practice generally to try and clean up your paths where you can. And this is a mess, but we've got lots of segments. Remember we can drag over everything. Go to the Pathfinder panel, 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 <laughs> click Unite. And it immediately just combines all of those little pieces into, uh, well, a, a single path, which is incredibly easy. Now, you might have noticed if you have a keen eye that there's these little jagged bits. Now, if I go back a few steps with edit and then undo, let's just go back to when I added the stroke. You can see them there. I missed them at the time. So the way we can get around that is if we go to the stroke panel, we can go to the corner and just round that off. So this just happens when you get lots and lots of paths going on. It gets quite complicated, especially with custom brushes. So by rounding off those corners, it just makes sure there's no kind of jagged bits sticking out the side. So I've just got to go and repeat that last step. Object, expand, click OK. Pathfinder panel, unite everything together. And there we go, we have a nice clean shape. Very, very good. Jolly good. We can select this. And then from the swatches panel, again, if you don't see the swatches panel, window all the way down here, there it is. So I'm just gonna pick a color, check preview, check global, and we'll pick a nice color, something a little bit nautical. I think that looks cool. Now the reason we check the global box is because if you edit a global swatch from the swatches panel, it will update every other instance of that swatch throughout your entire document. So every time I work in Illustrator, everything I do is with global swatches because it will inevitably uh, save you time. So there we go, we've got our rope brush. This is all still editable. We can increase or decrease the stroke to get a slightly different pattern. And then we have this other version over here that we added a bit more width to our stroke with, but uh, yeah, there we go. That's how to create a rope brush all in Adobe Illustrator. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And in part two, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this brush that we've created, and I'm gonna show you how to create some rope styled lettering. So it's gonna be really cool. Look out for that one next week. But as always, if you have any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.